seeing the screen? Yes, we are. Okay, sir. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon, sir. Today, group one will be presenting on the CARICOM. On CARICOM. The group members are Kisana Aitman, Melissa Blair, and Amelia Miller. The origin and functions of CARICOM. The Caribbean community, also known as CARICOM, is a group of 20 countries, 50 member states, and five associate members. It is home to approximately 16 million citizens, 60% of whom are under the age of 30, and from the main ethnic groups of indigenous people, Africans, Indians, Europeans, Chinese, Portuguese, and Javanese. The community is multilingual, with English as the major language complemented by French and Dutch, and variations of these as well as African and Asian expressions. CARICOM came into being on July 4th, 1973, with the signing of the Treaty of Chagaramos by Prime Ministers Errol Barrow for Barbados, Forbes Burnham for Guyana, Michael Manley for Jamaica, and Eric Williams for Trinidad and Tobago. The treaty was later revised in 2002 to allow for the eventual establishment of a single market and a single economy. Why was CARICOM for? The, the establishment of the Caribbean community and common market was the result of a 15 year effort to fulfill the hope and regional integration, which was born with the establishment of the British West Indies Federation in 1958. The West Indies Federation came to an end in 1962, but its end may be regarded as the real beginning of what is now the Caribbean community. With the end of the Federation, political leaders in the Caribbean wanted to ensure that cooperation among the, among the islands were still maintained, so more serious efforts to strengthen the ties between the islands and, main, and mainland were established by providing for the continuance and strengthening of the areas of cooperation that existed during the Federation. The, these are the member states and associate states of CARICOM. So the member states are Antigua and Barbuda, the Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Haiti, Jamaica, Montserrat, St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Suriname and Trinidad and Tobago. The associate states consist of Anguilla, Bermuda, the British Virgin Islands, the Cayman Islands, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. What are the functions of CARICOM? So the first function is to provide assistance to all states which are members and to resolve any problems which may arise, to coordinate foreign policies across all nations and promote general economic advancement, to improve the standard of work and living for its member states, to expand trade and economic relations with third states, to enhance levels of international competitiveness, to achieve a greater measure of economic leverage, to create an organization for increased production and productivity, and to create an environment of accelerated, coordinated, and sustained economic development and convergence. CARICOM's achievements and benefits. Since beginning its operation in 1973, CARICOM has attained many achievements and has benefited its member countries. These achievements and benefits include one, free movement of capital, two, reaching out to and incorporating other regional groups. For example, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, is now considered a subgroup of CARICOM. Three, the creation of the Caribbean Court of Justice, CCJ, and the movement towards establishing it as the final appellate court of the region. Four, the creation of a stronger Caribbean identity and unity, along with the promotion of Caribbean industries, produce, and services. Five, the establishment of the Caribbean Single Market Economy, CSME, and six, the ability to achieve better negotiations with trading partners through the CRNM, which is the Caribbean Regional Negotiating Machinery. Challenges faced by CARICOM. 
Despite CARICOM's many accomplishments, there were some challenges they had to face. One, there were difficulties in implementing regional goals due to lack of authority across the region and insufficient tools of governance and implementa implementation. Two, there were functional inefficiencies due to a reluctance to pool resources. An example of such inefficiency is the ideal of a common currency for Caribbean states has not been achieved beyond OECS. This would have helped to promote ease of travel for tourists who would only have to contend with one currency. Three, some Caribbean leaders are still wary about the benefits and usefulness of CARICOM. The Jamaican JLP political party, for example, has openly questioned the need for CARICOM and its various arms, such as the CCJ, with the leader Andrew Holness suggesting in 2016 that Jamaica establishes its own final court. He, like many Jamaicans, believes that CARICOM's policies can interfere with sovereignty of an independent state and turned to act in the country's best interests. Four, the full integration of Haiti and Cuba, two historic and important countries in the Caribbean region, into CARICOM has yet to be achieved after years of conversations. And this is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening. All right, thank you very much. Uh, the, okay. I will look at, all right, I'll talk about it after, but good presentation. Next group, group two. Good afternoon. Today, Group 2 will be presenting on UE and CXE under the contributions of regional institutions. So specifically, we'll be presenting on the origin and history, achievements and benefits, and the challenges faced by each institution, respectively. So first, we have University of the West Indies origin and history. The University of the West Indies was founded in 1948 and started with the Mona campus in Jamaica at the suggestion of the Moyne Commission. The university was established to promote higher education, learning and research, and would come as a solution to the lack of training facilities for skilled workers in the region. The second campus was established in St. Augustine, Trinidad in 1960, and the third was established in Cape Hill, Barbados in 1963. The University of the West Indies currently offers over 800 certificates and degree options and is ranked among the top 2.5% of universities in the world. Good afternoon, everyone. Some of the achievements and benefits of University of the West Indies, UWE. UWE offers a curriculum which includes training professionals which are like doctors, teachers, lawyers, et cetera, of the future in order to work in both public and private sectors to meet the needs of the region. UWE acts as a forum for, inter for regional integration by uniting scholars, academics, and intellectuals in the common purpose of serving the Caribbean. UWE raises levels of innovation and entrepreneurship. It also produces research which contributes to the development of the private sector, and this helps in solving the society's problem. It also produces skilled personnel in business, government, and industry, and the people who are committed to the region by, de by developing science and technology. Some of the challenges faced are, you encounter strong competition from foreign universities that offer degrees by distant learning. You does not have the full integration of programs across the campuses. This causes students to travel across the region for some programs that are offered only on a specific campus. 
Another challenge is that some facilities, some faculties such as medicine and law are too costly for students. University has been finding it difficult to lower the cost of these programs to increase the enrollment of future lawyers and doctors. Contribution required by certain states are not paid on time and leads to a depletion of funds used to maintain the university. Therefore, lecturers are not paid on time and necessary tools or items needed for teaching of certain programs cannot be attained. No, the lecturers are paid on time, just the other workers are not. <laughs> they pay the lecturers on time, man. Okay, and remember that also, remember that the lecturers are paid by the government of Jamaica and not by the university. So the lecturers are paid by the government. They send over the salaries for the lecturers. So for if you're a lecturer who is at the, like a part-time lecturer, you're paid from students tuition. If you are other workers like the admin workers and those workers, then you're paid from the university coffers. So those workers at times are not paid. Uh, on time. Okay, so we'll change it before we upload. Huh? I said that we'll change it before we upload it. Yes, especially yeah. this, especially the, the lecture, the, especially those who are tutoring. They are the ones who face a lot of issues. If you tutor up there, they don't want to hear you. Okay. So but continue. Okay, so next we'll be presenting on Caribbean Examinations Council. Good afternoon, everyone. The Caribbean Examination Council, Origin and History. The Caribbean Examination Council, CXC, was established in 1972 under the participating governments of CARICOM. The supplementary agreement was signed in Barbados in 1973. The council comprises of 16 countries. Some of these include Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, St. Lucia, Anguilla, Antigua, and Barbuda. The first examinations for the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate, CSEC, was offered in 1979 in five subjects, including English, Geography, Mathematics, Integrated Science, and Caribbean History. Okay, so some achievements and benefits of CXE. The CXE syllabus reflects learning from a Caribbean perspective. Finance is kept in the region rather than going to the UK as foreign exchange. It creates employment opportunities such as administrators and curriculum officers. They offer secondary level certification, advanced proficiency diplomas and associate degrees. Ensures that the education of Caribbean people is geared towards the needs of the region, thus fostering economic development, examination by the region, of the region, and for the region. Lastly, it creates interaction among peoples of the region, regional integration, awareness of commonality, and a sense of brotherhood. Good afternoon. Challenges faced. There are many challenges that CXC has faced. One such issue is that while most tertiary institutions in extra regional societies accept CXC results, there are still some that require results from qualifying exams in their own region before accepting the student to their school of choice. Many refuse to accept CXC results as adequate. Another challenge is that many candidates from across the region yearn for a more diverse evaluation, especially as it pertains to languages. It is believed that CXC is discriminatory for its continued use of standard English as the official language for the responses to exam questions. Lastly, CXC textbooks and revision guides, especially for the social sciences, tend to use more examples of and references to the larger Caribbean states. Cultural and geographical references to smaller states are minimal. OK, 
Okay, this is the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening. All right, very good presentation and good criticism of CHC. Next group, group three. Okay, good morning, everyone. Today, my group, Asha Gordon, Kanila Hunter, Destiny Johnson, and Jordi thompson McClough will be looking on, looking at regional integration, but focusing on West Indies Cricket Board, WICB, and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS. Jody, your mic is kind of low. We can't hear you very well. Formerly known as West Indies Cricket Board, WICB, is the governing body for cricket in the West Indies, a sporting confederation with a dozen main industries of the Caribbean countries and dependencies that once formed the British West Indies. It was originally formed in the early 1920s. As the West Indies Cricket Board of Country, we're not hearing so clearly. A mic is very low. In November Hello. 2015, the board is up to be named. Somebody, could you? West I don't Indies think she can hear. Reconstructing exercise of a reconstructing exercise. So I don't think she can hear us either. Of a separate commercial job. This year, branding formally occurred in May 2015. Joining, it's still a bit low. Um, try leaving and rejoining. I'll just read your part. Okay, so the WIBC, the origin of the WIBC, the cricket, cricket West Indies, CWI, formerly known as the West Indies Cricket Board, is the governing body for cricket in the West Indies which is a sporting confederation of over a dozen mainly English-speaking Caribbean countries and dependencies that once formed the British West Indies. It was originally formed in the early 1920s as the West Indies Cricket Board of Control, but changed its name to the West Indies Cricket Board in 1996. In November 2015, the board resolved, resolved to change its name um, to the Cricket West Indies as a part of restructuring exercise that would also see creation of a separate commercial body. This rebranding formally occurred in May 2017. Next slide. Functions of the WIBC. The two main functions of the WIBC are aiding regional development of cricket in the Americas region under the ICC's development program and to establish and sustain West Indies cricket as a sporting symbol of the West Indies and the West Indies team as a dominant team in international cricket. Achievements of the WIBC. So the WIBC has achieved numerous things as you can see here. One such being developing and promoting West Indian cricket for the benefit and enjoyment of the West Indies people, clients and other stakeholders a role in the development of a regional identity as well as an economic contribution to the region through staging competitions, for example, the Cricket World Cup. The promotion of different formats, for example, 2020, in a bid to further popularize the game, 
especially to those that may find the longer test format too slow. The creation of a West Indian Cricket Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame to celebrate the likes of Brian Lara, Sir Garfield Sobers, Sir Frank Worrell, and Courtney Walsh, who are recognized the world over as some of the game's best players. Any there? Okay. Is Jordy back? No. Okay, so challenges. This score between the West Indian Players Association, the WIPA, and the WICB regarding compensation packages for matches and the seemingly biased recruiting methods of the board have led to a string of disappointing performances from the team in recent times. Bombing is increasingly becoming a problem as the sport is not as popular as it once was and has a weak spectatorship and viewership compared to other sports. The lack of discipline among players, the fact that there is no long-term policy of recruiting and training exceptionally talented children in the sport. The Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS. So the origin of the OECS, following the collapse of the West Indies Federation, two caretaker bodies were created the West Indies Associated States Council of Ministers in 1966 and the Eastern Caribbean Common Market in 1968. As the islands gained their independence from Britain, it became evident that there was need for a formal, a more formal arrangement to assist with their development effort. So the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States was established in June 18, on June 18, 1981, by the Treaty of Basseterre in the capital city of St. Kitts and, and Nevis to formalize various aspects of economic cooperation and promote unity and solidarity between seven newly independent island states in the Eastern Caribbean. The OECS is now a 11 member grouping comprising of Antigua and Barbuda, Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Kitts and the Nevis, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Anguilla, Martinique, Guadeloupe, and the British Virgin Islands are associate members. The function of the OECS. The mission of the OECS is to be a major regional institution contributing to the sustainable development of the member states by supporting their involvement in the global economy and assisting them to maximize the benefits from their collective resources. Its stated objectives are, one, to promote cooperation among the member states and at a regional and international level, having due regard to the treaty establishing the Caribbean community and the Charter of the United Nations. Two, to promote unity and solidarity among member states and to defend their sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence. To assist, three, to assist the member states in the realization of their responsibilities and obligations to the international community with due regard to the role of international laws as a standard of conduct in their relationship. Four, to seek to achieve the fullest possible harmonization of foreign policy among the member states, to seek to adopt as far as possible common positions on international issues and to establish and maintain wherever possible arrangements for joint overseas representations and or common services. Five, to promote economic integration among member states through the provisions of the, of the agreement establishing the East Caribbean common market. And six, to pursue the said purposes through its respective institutions by the discussion of questions of common concern and by agreement. The organization of OECS, as an economic union, the OECS is a single market and custom union where goods, people, and capital are free to move. The organization also works to unify monetary policy and, pol and policies related to government taxes and revenue, in addition to harmonizing their approach toward trade, health, education, the environment, 
agriculture, tourism, and energy. Eight members share a single currency, the Eastern Caribbean dollar. They are Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The British Virgin Islands uses the U United States dollar, while Martinique and Guadeloupe as overseas department of France use the euro. You guys can hear me now, right? Yes, Jordi. Okay. So the achievements and challenges of the OECS. The OECS has a central bank, its own currency, and even a shared jud judicial system that is funded from a pool formed by the member countries. These accomplishments, though not easy feats, were facilitated by the striking common commonalities among the small islands that are geographically close and share a similar history of development. These smaller Caribbean islands face the same issues, being small states with limited land, and also acknowledge that the free movement of people will not only lead to a more fluid sharing of resources, but also help to maintain a tourism product where visitors can travel along the island chain without endurance. Additionally, in an article focused around the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Harris's reflection on the OECS, he spoke, up, he spoke about and reflected on the achievements of the OECS. One such achievement being the OECS having one of the world's most stable currencies and have also seen us procure the most affordable medicines for our people. And that, and that was just to name a few. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good discussion there. Next group. Oh, also, sir, um, Asha Gordon was not able to be here today to present. She had an appointment. All right. Thanks for that. Jada, we're not hearing anything. Hold on, give me a second. The regional security system since the early 1970s ensured the stability and well-being of member states through mutual cooperation, maximizing regional security, and preserving the socio-economic development of our people. Whether by air, land, or sea, we stand firm to protect our regional security. Good afternoon, everyone. Our group will be presenting on regional, the regional security system, the RSS, and our group members are Kristen Elliott, Jamila Fletcher, Deidre Jackson, Toriana Connor, and Jada Watson. However, Jamila has an appointment, so she won't be here for a presentation today. So we'll start with, with the mission statement of the RSS, which says to ensure the stability and well-being of the member states through mutual cooperation in order to maximize regional security in preserving the social and economic development of our people. So a little bit about the history of the organization. The regional security system, the RSS, was created out of a need for a collective response to security threats which were impacting on the stability of the region in the 70s and the 80s. In 1982, four members of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines signed a, mem a memorandum of understanding, an MOU, 
with Barbados to provide a mutual assistance on request. According to the Memorandum of Understanding, members were obligated to prepare contingency plans and assist one another on request of national emergencies and threats to national security. This gave rise to the birth of the RSS. St. Kitts and Nevis became a signatory in February 1984 and Grenada in January of 1985. The treaty establishing the RSS was signed at St. George's, Grenada on the 5th of March 1996, replacing the MOU. The system has the status of an international organization and enjoys legal personality. The memorandum actually came out of the tension created by the socialist regime of Maurice Bishop in Grenada. And Maurice Bishop was basically the prime minister of Grenada at the time when the US of the US's invasion. So the US security forces supported the memorandum. The regional security system's first mission, therefore, ended up being dismantling Bishop's government in October of 1938. Kristen will continue. A quotation taken from the Mohammed, the textbook uh, made in 2015 is, the RSS now has wider responsibilities to CARICOM under the Treaty on Security Assistance, and the Barbados headquarters also houses a coordinating secretariat of the CARICOM Security Assistance Mechanism. So basically this is saying that the RSS, although it is, it is its own independent organization, it now has connections with the CARICOM. So CARICOM members can also use the RSS if the need arises. So the functions of the regional security system fall under its objectives as seen on their website. So paraphrase from their website, we wrote off their functions. And basically it's an overview from, it's going in more depth to what the mission statement said earlier. So basically this was under their core services and they are, to respond immediately and appropriately to all situations, to offer programs to increase security awareness and reduce the opportunity for safety threats to the region, to conduct high quality and objective research, as well as providing intelligence and trench analysis in a timely manner to boost decision-making, to strengthen relationships with security institutions and sectors of member countries with the, with the goal of identifying security priorities to develop responses in conjunction, to provide advice on matters in relation to national and regional security, and finally, to facilitate the dissemination of information and administer support to member countries. So we will, we will continue with achievements, sorry. So meeting in Barbados on October the 21st, the Defense and Security Committee of the OECS requested assistance from Barbados and Jamaica and nominated Dom the Dominican Prime Minister Charles to formally notify Britain and the United States of the OECS's decision to take joint actions to restore order in Grenada. And the order that was to be restored in Jamaica is because Grenada was becoming a socialist country, which um, many countries in the Caribbean, them being democratic, don't support socialism. So they saw that as some form of social instability, especially following on the heels of the Cuban Revolution and the war between Cuba and the US. The request for the United States intervention reportedly was made orally to the United States diplomats in Barbados that evening. In its formal request for the United States assistance made in writing on October 23rd, the OECS cited the consequent unprecedented threat to the peace and security of the region created by the vacuum of authority in Grenada and violation of human rights, including killings, which is, well, socialist societies are very autocratic, so um, they had a lot of violation of human rights, which is mainly a democratic um, belief system. So that's why it also contributes to social instability. After the Grenada operation, the United States, Britain, and neighboring states such as Barbados began assisting the island to rebuild its security forces. And just a point to 
Just a point of information, if anybody was wondering, the Dominican prime minister, that's Eugenia Charles. So Charles is the last name, Eugenia Charles. Thank you, Kristen. Continuing. So I'll continue with achievements by the RSS. So the regional security system, that should be system, I'm sorry. After the Grenada coup from the C-26, which was the Barbados Defense Air, Air Wing. The operation was formed to, prov to provide Barbados and other Eastern islands with maritime surveillance in order to prevent drug trafficking. The aircrafts for the operations were donated by the US and became operational in 1999. According to Captain George Harris, um, he was the captain of the, the C-26 operation. The RSS Air Wing was rated the busiest air wing in the world. He came to this conclusion from an article in the Jane's Defense Magazine in 2004. The RSS Air Wing has flown over 1,614 missions, which resulted in the persecution of 308 of their targets. They have seized 64,392 pounds of cannabis and 26,237 pounds of cocaine. In St. Vincent from August 18 to the 24th of 2007, a training course was funded by Barbados. Um, essentially, it was um, an operation of 13 men who provided the RSS successfully um, and eradicated a marijuana farm in the hills of the islands and confiscated approximately 100 million US dollars of drugs. In 2017, the RSS Air Wing presented two new C-26 surveillance aircraft in support of their membrane states. The Air Wing under the RSS also provides relief programs assistance with the Eastern Caribbean. This was displayed after the hurricane, after Hurricane Ivan in 2004, where they provided approximately 46,000 pounds of relief supplies and 356 airlifts were deployed in search and rescue missions. Benefits of the regional security system. As stated in their mission statement, they aim to ensure the stability and well-being of member states through mutual cooperation in order to maximize regional security in preserving the social and economic development of our people. With the regional security system, members receive advice on matters relating to national and regional security. They deliver programs to increase security awareness and to reduce the opportunity for and the incidents and the impact of threats to the safety and security of the region. They provide trend analysis to assist with decision, with decision making, which are derived from comprehensive research. They receive an immediate, an immediate and appropriate response to all situations. The RSS also conducts operations that aim to seize the transportation of narcotics across the island borders. And they organize, the organization provides air, land, and sea protections among members. The challenges faced by the regional security system. While there has been an upgrading of personnel and security measures, the RSS faces several challenges. Some territories have an issue with the USA's involvement in the region in the region under the guise of being a part of the RSS. Not all CARICOM member states are a part of the RSS, and there are large gaps in the security of the region that have been used as transshipment points for drugs and illegal guns from South America heading to the United States. Funds are limited to carrying out the original intentions of maintaining databases on intelligence issues, extending the training to more of the armed forces, and monitoring the region by better equipping the Coast Guard. And there is no clear mandate on how to deal with cyber crimes and money laundering. As a security system for the Caribbean, the RSS needs to be able to police all of the Caribbean. It is to address the security issues. It needs to include not only all CARICOM countries, but also other Caribbean countries facing similar risks and security issues. 
And that is the end of our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation on the regional security system. All right, ladies. So I'll comment on the presentations tomorrow uh, and the other groups. Uh, I think there are two more groups uh, that will present tomorrow. All right. Thank you very much, ladies. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Okay, sir. Thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir.